Hello everyone, I am Rup Katha. Welcome to the second episode of Weekly Math Hinta. Today, Shomik has found a fantastic problem from AMC 10. So, let's have him in the discussion and take a look at the problem. Hello Rup Katha, thank Hi. you for having me again. Uh, this problem has really amused me as it offers some great visualization of beauty of mathematics underlying into it. So, we'll try to explore all of this. So, first I want to analyze every word of this problem statement. It has something to do with complex numbers that we can understand. Okay. Specifically, it is talking about the cube roots of unity. Okay. okay. And it, it is talking about a set which has the elements of the form A plus B omega plus C omega square. Okay. But tell me one thing, Shomik. It is asking us to find the area of a set. So, how can we do that? Yes, it is a very good question actually. I will surely talk about that uh, in the, uh, later in this video. So, without any further ado, let us jump into it. First, I want to talk about complex numbers. Okay, so can you tell me what a complex number is? Yes, uh, any number of the form x plus iota y is a complex number. Right. And uh, where x and y are the real numbers and iota is the square root of negative Fantastic. 1. Fantastic, but they can also be expressed uh, geometrically interpreted as a point on a plane. Okay, so uh, any complex number x plus y y is a point on this plane having the coordinates x and y. And this plane, do you know what we call this plane? Yeah, we call this plane argon plane. Exactly. This is well known fact. But do you know that they can be interpreted as an arrows? What do you mean? Yeah, this is very easy. Uh, you can see this origin. Join a, a, an arrow starting from the origin to that point x, y. Okay. So these arrows, if, if you change the position of the point, the arrows will also change and every different arrow will indicate towards a different point. So notice that every arrow here has two components. It has some length and it is also pointing towards a direction, right? The length is called magnitude of that arrow, okay? So if you change any of this, you will get a different point. Okay. These arrows are actually called vectors, okay? So think about any point on this complex number, they can be thought as an arrow or a vector starting from the origin, pointing towards that particular point. Virupkatha, do you know what happens if we add two vectors? Can you please explain? Yeah, sure. So let's say we have a vector here. This is the vector A. And let's say we have another vector B. I shift A parallel here and I shift B here. Okay. So can you see this is a parallelogram now? And if you draw this diagonal of the parallelogram, it is basically another vector, which is the sum of A and B. This is called the parallelogram law of vector addition. Okay. Let us now talk about the cube roots of unity. See this equation here x cube minus 1 equal to 0. Can you tell me one solution of this equation? Yeah, it is very simple. The answer is 1. Right. Can you tell me another solution? No, this is the only root. That is not correct. There are more roots. Uh, recall the fundamental theorem of algebra. What does it say? Uh, it says any n degree equation has n number of roots. Okay, so it is a 3 degree equation. So it should have 3 number of roots. Exactly. So 1 is uh, one of the roots. But uh, so if 1 is a root, that means x minus 1 is a factor of that, this okay. equation. So if we factorize it, there is another factor, which is this x square plus x plus 1. So there are other two roots, which are complex roots and they are roots of this quadratic equation, which we can find out very easily. And you can say this. Uh, these are the complex roots. So these three things together, they are called the cube roots of unity. So the cube roots of unity are 1, omega and omega square. So you see the complex roots, one of the complex root is taken as omega, other one is omega square. But why is that so? They are two different complex numbers. Why we are saying one is omega, other one is omega square? So I'll, I'll uh, ask you this question, you guys this question. If you know why one of, uh, one of this is taken as omega, other one is omega square, if you know that, please comment down below. Now, uh, let us see this complex number as vectors. As I said, any complex number can be taken as vectors. So let's see the positions of the uh, this complex number on the plane and we can see these vectors here. Okay, let us now talk about area of a set, which is the main concept of this problem. Okay. So it is basically asking to find area of a set. But can we do that for any set? Is it possible? So let's take an example. Let's take the set of natural numbers. Can you tell me that how that set, set of natural number looks geometrically? Yes, some discrete points on the number line. Exactly. So if you take the number line, there will be uh, some discrete points. There are some gaps between all of these points. So it looks geometrically like this. Can we find area of this set? 
it is not really like it is not measurable i can say because why uh, each point have zero area i can say and what will be like uh, sum of all these infinitely many zeros we can't really do anything with exactly. that but look at this set now it is the interval ab which means all real numbers greater than a and less than b now if you look at uh, look at this set geometrically it is basically looking like a line segment it is part of the real line so we can measure its length so notice one thing uh, in the previous set that we considered the set of natural number that has infinite that had infinitely many number of elements this set also involves infinitely many elements but there is a certain difference uh, between the cardinality of these two sets okay. so what is the difference i'll uh, raise this question to our viewers so if you guys know that what is the difference between the cardinality of these two sets please comment down below similarly look at this set this is a set having some infinitely many discrete points from the plane here also for this set same as the set of natural numbers we can't really measure the area but now if you look at this set which is let's say i define the set like this i will have all points inside this closed region in a set okay so in that case i can measure area of that set that set is actually equivalent to this closed region and i can measure the area of this set okay so if you want to know more on this concept you can learn about measure theory which is a branch of real analysis ah, so can you please suggest to me some books from where i can read about this yes i'll tell you later also we will uh, give the names of the book in the description okay. and if you want further guidance in to learn this measure theory or any other topic you can look at the custom programs offered by chinta uh, to learn more please visit the link given below Okay, show me. So let's get back to the problem again. Yeah. So we now know all the required concepts to solve the problem. So before we proceed, I want you to pause the video and give the problem a try. Okay. So each element of the given set looks like a into one plus b into omega plus c into omega square. So we have a constant multiplied by the cube roots of unity. Uh, so we have three constant and they are multiplied by the cube roots of unity and then we added them. Okay. So now let's uh, graphically look at this. One is a complex number. One is in fact a complex number. It it is it is a real number. It can also be considered as complex number one comma zero. So if you graphically look at this, one comma zero is this vector over here. Now we are multiplying this vector with a real constant a, which varies between zero and one, which is given in the problem. So if we do that, you see that we will get other vectors. In the same direction, but the magnitudes will change. The magnitudes will vary like this. Now the same thing happens for b omega as well. Omega is a vector. We are multiplying that with a real constant b. So we get many vectors in the same direction, but having different magnitudes. So now let's keep a and b fixed at one. They are specifically taken as one. So we get these two vectors, right? And their sum would be if you complete the parallelogram, the sum would be the diagonal. Uh, let's keep a fixed and let's vary b you see we get different different parallelograms and for that we get different vectors as the sum so now keep b fixed and move a and then you get this now think if we keep moving a and b together what happens mm, we get all points inside this parallelogram yes so every point inside this parallelogram is actually the part of the given set okay now if we do the same if we add a and c omega square we get the other parallelogram and similarly for b omega and c omega square if we add them we get the other parallelogram so what is it now oh it's a hexagon now so we can easily find out the area uh, it is made up of six equilateral triangles having sides of length one thank you shomik for proposing such a beautiful problem you are welcome and thank you so much guys for watching this video please comment your answers for the questions we have raised the best responders will be mentioned in our next video find this video helpful please like and share with your friends and for more such mathematical contents please subscribe to our channel if you want to know more about our math olympiad iscmi and research programs please log in to chinta.com goodbye until we meet in the next episode